on both sides of the aircraft you'll see that I've got a couple of approach plate holders uh, simply aluminium um, clip folders really clipboards with the clip all I've done is bent over one edge painted it white and screwed it into the sidewall so it's fairly rigid and um, works well and there's one on the other side these ones are obviously a little bit bigger than um, they have in the real 767 um, but they work just as well at the moment you see I've blocked the side windows out with just a bit of um, cloth at this time so when the lights go out I can't really see through the side windows nor would I want to because at the moment I've just got that, that front screen operating uh, at the moment the, um, eventually I'm going to have three screens like if you've seen many flight sims on YouTube have them with three projectors and of course eventually have visuals out the side as well which really does immerse you into the entire uh, sim and when you're flying um, it can be quite easy to get what they call vertigo or um, spatial disorientation if you like because it, um, all you're looking at is outside visuals at the moment I still have I'm trying to counteract with these side curtains what we call room effect now if I quickly turn these lights out come back into the sim and take a seat you'll see that um, looking out the front is purely visuals which is great until you start to look over to the side you'll see that the visuals end and now I've got a plank of wood up here and something down there like a picture and a stand and a seat around the corner and that's what we call room effect when you're flying along looking out your cockpit the last thing you want to see is a pot plant over there or that picture or frame you want that to be all visual so hence the need to block out the side windows when you don't have anything there um, because you can't see anything out of there anyway until such a time as you get three projectors that funny light that you can see here is the projector because I'm using rear projection at this time you can't do anything about that um, you're going to get that sort of glow of the light some people have theirs up the top doing exactly the same as what mine does but it passes for the sun in their visuals a lot of the time during the day uh, and it's not that noticeable during the night because obviously the light is not as bright so um, if anyone's wondering what that is that's the light of the projector believe it or not you don't really notice it after a while when you sit in the sim like anything else when you're sitting inside the sim um, you're sort of immersed in the whole um, aircraft looking out the window you tend to forget about little things like that after you've been flying for a while another big one which um, is something we just can't escape yet we don't have the resources uh, unless you've got a lot of money um, you can't counteract the problem and that is what is commonly seen is the yawing effect when in a flight sim um, if I was to put the camera here dead smack in the middle of the sim you wouldn't see any yawing effect at all because at the moment you're looking straight down the window in the middle of the sim because flight sim was sort of made for one screen the viewpoint is always going to be in the middle so when you sit here in the captain seat what when you uh, push forward in the aircraft and you want to start taxiing or taking off you would expect the aircraft to be moving directly forward which would be in that direction there but as you can clearly see that's not forward at all the, the view is stretched out to the middle of the screen which is over this way so in fact instead of going in this direction you're actually going to be going off in an angle in that direction there so once again even though my face and body and everything's facing this direction we're actually going to be taking off and taxing in this direction here which is in line with pretty much that angle there once again once you're in the aircraft for a while you don't really notice it and um, there are measures to counteract that a little bit by bringing the entire screen view over to this side 
um, for the captain and then you can perhaps put a switch in the cockpit to flick it back over to the co-pilot side um, for when the co-pilot's flying. Um, once again you can zoom out the view a little bit. When you've got three screens happening it's less of, um, of a problem again but uh, once again it's a very small sort of um, negative I suppose when it comes to um, having outside visuals but uh, like I said it doesn't last very long. You get that immersed in everything um, that you're doing sitting inside. It's much better I believe for me to be sitting inside an aircraft looking out the windows than sitting at a desk looking through a, a monitor to fly my aeroplane. So there you go. There's just a little bit about uh, the visuals. Um, I'm really sorry about the, the poor quality of them at this stage. Uh, I hopefully can rectify that um, when finances become a little better before too long. Sim seats, fairly important part of the sim I think, that you have good comfortable seats. You're going to be sitting in there for quite some time on and off, so it's best to be comfortable while you're there. I've chosen to go with Pajero seats, I got these from the local wrecker, fairly cheap, I think I paid 150 bucks for both of them and they're almost like brand new. The reason I chose these seats is because they're very high and um, Underneath here there's a lot of mechanisms going on which enables the seat to come up and down as well as back and forth. Obviously they slide on rails. So uh, a bit more manoeuvrable than just a standard car seat. Um, unfortunately they don't go sideways. Uh, that would be great to allow manoeuvring in and out of the sim. As you'll see, unlike the real aircraft, the side wall of the real aircraft really does come out on a much wider angle, so you do have a lot more room in between the seat and the side wall. Obviously the, um, the side pockets here are a lot wider as well. But due to the, uh, the room constraints that I had at the last place, I had to build the sim within um, the room that I have. So even though I've got a little bit more room now in this place, I've decided to keep it as it is. Still quite effective, just not 100% accurate, that's all. You also notice, I've touched on before, the base. I think putting your sim on a base is fairly important if uh, you want it to be manoeuvrable. I just had this entire section here straight onto the floor. There was no base. So for about 150 bucks, I think it was, I bought some pine, some um, pine flooring, and some wheels. And using the guide that I mentioned earlier as well, I measured out the exact measurements of the shell, did, measured out uh, the wood, cut it out, bolted it all together and also using screws and then added six um, wheels, castering wheels to underneath to be able to manoeuvre the sim wherever I wanted it. These wheels will easily carry over half a tonne, so uh, plenty for what I need. So now, the beauty about it is, if I have to move house or something like that, I can just push the sim out onto a flatbed truck or something with a, a, a um, hydraulic lift or something like that, or manoeuvre it around the room with ease. So um, I strongly suggest putting your sim too on a base uh, for ease of movement. I just thought I'd quickly touch on sound at the moment down here you'll see that I've got real cheapo speakers $39 something like that um, and it, it punches out pretty good sound it's not too bad however if you're going to go ahead and build a sim you're probably going to want pretty good sound coming out of it as well uh, I would suggest a subwoofer as well and you can get fairly cheap sound systems uh, some opt for just the, the standard 5.1 some go right up to the 8 channel that sort of thing. Um, for me, I'll probably just have a couple of speakers and under here, I think under the pedestal, or some people like to put it underneath their seat, I have a subwoofer. Uh, the one that I'm planning on having, the subwoofer is actually facing down. So um, when I turn it up, it's actually going to be vibrating through the wood, through the floor. So when you 
power up and do other bits and pieces you'll actually feel some vibration through the sim as well which is um, much more realistic and uh, noticeable when you're flying um, there are other ways for your sound system um, multi-channel stuff that you can have different speakers you, some people will have sound coming from the front they'll also have sound coming from uh, up here at the top maybe some cabin announcements and things like that will come from the ceiling uh, some like to have jet engine noises coming from behind back this way somewhere over here um, obviously because the engines are behind the pilots not in front so uh, what you do with your sounds up to you just make sure it's decent quality sound um, that will greatly improve your sim experience